Hey and welcome to the short stuff. I'm Josh and there's Chuck and Jerry's here too. Dave's here in spirit. Uh, way to go, Dave. And this is short stuff, I think I said. That's right. And hey, we want to wish Dave well as he recovers from back surgery. Yeah. Yep. He made it out on the other side and we're very happy for him. That's why I said way to go, Dave. <laughs> That's right. I thought I didn't know if he wanted to leave it unsaid. Either way, I think Dave's happy with it. I think He's so. like, you guys can keep talking about me the whole episode. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, we're, his nickname is uh, is is Dave Boba T. Well, I'm not going to say his last name because I don't want people to bother him. C. We just call him the Boba T guy. Right. I've never had Boba T. Oh, no? No. And I need to. Sure. I think everybody needs to have it at least once. I had it once. I decided immediately I didn't like it. Oh, okay. I like everything about it except for the Boba. That's what oh. I didn't like. I don't like that. It, the the gelatinous, gooey, chewiness of it, I'm, mm. I'm not crazy for. And I can totally see how somebody would go nuts for it. Mm -hmm. But I also see how somebody like me just is turned off by it immediately. Well, I don't want to try it as much because gelatinous is never a word I seek out for my mouth. So you can get boba tea without the boba. And I'm sure the purists will be like, shut up. You can't call it boba tea. You yeah. still can. Everybody settle down. You just ask for it without the boba, and it, you will love it, Chuck. It's very sweet and tasty, and there's all sorts of neat flavors that they can put into it. And it won't have ge gelatinous spheres f going down your gullet because you accidentally forgot to chew. They're going to say, all right, well, I'll make you one, but you're not getting one of those big, fat straws. <laughs> they do. They give you the big, fat straw anyway, so you go through it really quick. Uh, all right, so we're talking about uh, boba tea or bubble tea. And that is something that the, you know, I'm kind of a dummy. The first time I saw that, I was like, what in the world is going on in that cup? Uh, because, you know, you see what looks like a regular drink, mm -hmm. but then you see all these little uh, round pearls inside of a cup. And I didn't know what it was uh, until I looked into it more back then. And now I know because of this, that that is a Taiwanese tea and it is. Uh, there are a couple of different competing stories on how this came about because right. there are two rival tea shops uh, in Taiwan from the 1980s that each say, no, my person is the one who did this first. Yeah. Each one claims um, creation of boba tea initially. And what's weird is they're, they're, they, the stories are separated by just a year. So the first one is um, Hanlin Tea Room in Tainan, Taiwan, and their founder, Tu Sung Ho, um, the story goes that in 1986, uh, two uh, found tapioca balls on sale at the market and said, mm -hmm. I'm going to add these to my milk tea. Like just had this thought, random thought, and from that boba tea was born. Because basically boba tea is just tapioca balls added to milk tea. Right. Uh, the other story is remarkably similar. Uh, this is the, the tea house that is a rival of the other called uh, Chun Shu Tang. I'm not sure if that's correct or not. I'm doing my best. Uh, and they said, no, in 1987, we had a 20-year-old woman working here named uh, Lin Su Hu who uh, had this uh, tapioca pudding. Uh, it's called Fin, fin Yan in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And she just dumped it in her tea and drank it. And that's where it started. Yeah. What's weird is everybody separated themselves from Ms. Lin immediately because they thought she was super weird, and yet she may have invented boba tea. Right. So either way, uh, we'll probably never know who's the actual first person or the first tea shop, uh, but it was a big hit in Taiwan, mm -hmm. uh, eventually came over to the United States in the 90s, starting uh, where else? In, on the West Coast, in California mainly, uh, generally in Taiwanese communities at the time. And then, you know, kind of started becoming mainstream. And I feel like in the 2000s, it really, really broke out as like kind of the hot thing for hipsters to do. Yeah, I was going to say there's a 100% chance that it was proto-emo kids who brought it out of the Taiwanese communities into American mm -hmm. culture. <laughs> so, look so. at this, everybody. So um, the... But you can't really talk about boba tea unless you talk about milk tea because that's kind of the basis of it. And boba tea's really new from the 80s. Milk tea's not that old considering how old Taiwan is. Uh, yeah. It was just in the 1940s that a bartender named Chang Fan Shu got out of the bartending game but still could not get the cocktail shaker out of his hand and yeah. started mixing up teas. 
handshake and milk teas mm. um, that would kind of froth and have bubbles. So it became bubble tea, milk tea. Um, and that this went along for several decades. People went crazy for milk tea. And then eventually somebody thought either um, Tu Song Ho or Lin Siu Hui thought to add tapioca pudding balls. That's right. Uh, so you've got milk, you've got the ice, you've got black tea, and you've got those tapioca pearls. Mm-hmm. There are all kinds of variations now, different kinds of tea, different kinds of milks, uh, non-milks, you know, things like, you know, cashew milk and stuff like that, almond milk. And then if you go to one of these, you know, uh, boba tea places in, in a, some large urban center, mm-hmm. you're going to have all kinds of uh, fun and crazy variations and flavors and toppings and things like that. Yep. So I say we take a break and we'll come back and tell everybody a little more about boba tea. So, Chuck, I feel like you should take the fact of the podcast, what boba means in the first place. Is it something to do with Dolly Parton? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Wasn't it about boobs? Yeah, boba is Taiwanese slang for boob. So these uh-huh. are they're basically saying this tea has a bunch of little boobs floating around in it. And that's stuck still. Yeah, still, because most people don't know what boba means. I guess so. Uh well, we should talk about those bobas, uh, which is the tapioca. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't even sure. I mean, maybe I've had tapioca pudding, but it's a word I had heard, and I don't think I ever fully knew what even tapioca was. Right. Uh, but tapioca or boba is tapioca that's uh, it's a starch, apparently, um, extracted from cassava root. Mm-hmm. But so- it can also be extract- extracted from other things, right? Yeah, so cassava root is from South America, but it grows really well in Asia too, Southeast Asia, and in particular the um, maritime Southeast Asia, Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore, and East Timor. Poor West Timor gets left out of everything. Is there a West Timor? I don't think so. Okay. I hope not, now that I said that. But they were making these pearls, these tapioca pearls, not out of tapioca, but out of rice or palm hearts. The point is you're using a starch. It's, it's a ball of starch, essentially. Mm-hmm. It's almost nutrient-free, heavy in calories. But if you prepare them just right and you add them to the bubble tea, if you like that consistency, you're in heaven because they're chewy, they're mushy, they're weird, um, and they're gelatinous. Chewy, like, compare it to, like, a, a, a gummy bear. Or as they say in Germany, gummy bellen. Um. Uh, is that really what they call it in Germany? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's less chewy, but it's it's in a different way. Um, Can you compare it to anything? Have you had bubble tea? <laughs> you got me because for about a half a beat, I was like, I don't think I have. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't. Um, okay. Okay. No, no. I, I can't. Imagine taking a ball of really sticky wet rice and mashing it until there's no space between the individual grains of rice Mm -hmm. and then chewing that. Mm. Okay. That's the kind of the closest I can come up with. It's very starchy and sticky and it can stick to your teeth a little bit. Mm. It's, um, it's nothing good if you ask me, but again, I'm not, I'm not yucking anybody's yum. I don't care if you like it or not. That's fine. It's just not for me. All right. Well, I just have to try it for myself, I guess. Uh, If you're making tapioca pearls yourself, uh, you buy them dry. Uh, Apparently, you boil them for 30 minutes and then cool them for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like to really get that uh, disgusting consistency just right (laughs) Right? that you hate, uh, it's fairly specific. Like if you boil them too long, it's going to be too squishy and maybe too sticky. And if you uh, don't do it enough there, you can't chew them. They're too hard. So it sounds like you got to kind of hit that sweet spot. Yes, exactly. Um, So there, you can make your own boba tea now, right? That's all it takes? I I guess so. And then, you know, you make your – you shake up your drink, and then you add your tapioca pearls, and you've got your own boba tea. Yeah, and I think there was a food and wine article about boba tea, and they said that there's a, a word in Chinese for the perfect consistency of boba. It's QQ, like the letter Q, the letter Q. 
and it means chewy. Mm-hmm. So, wow, we just came up with two Chinese slang words, Taiwanese and a Chinese slang word. Mm-hmm. Um, and now you know what boba tea is all about. And if you haven't tried it, go out and try it. It's definitely worth trying. It's not so disgusting that you're you're going to just throw up or anything like that. Although right. they have come up with some that are really dancing right there on the edge. What, like the flavors? Yeah. The one that got me, it was mentioned in a Seattle Times post about boba tea that um, there's a, a salted cheese topping that essentially has the the consistency of like a really flimsy cheesecake, but it's very salty. It's made from powdered cheese. That sounds good to me on its own. On its own, yes. This is floating on top of a very sweet, milky tea drink. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> that that's that's good. a weird combo for me. That is a weird combo. I do like uh, uh, milk in my hot tea, so... Uh, like in my black tea or my breakfast tea. So, you know, I could see me liking the tea for sure. Yeah, if you ever go to one of these places and they have a taro or a dirty taro, get mm-hmm. that. Just tell them to hold the boba. Or get two. Get one without the boba so you can enjoy that one and get one with the boba so you can try it at least once. All right, I'll, do, I'll try it out. Okay. Well, since Chuck said he's going to try it out, everybody, that means short stuff is out. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.